Hi, blog her. You have Monica Padman and Kristen Bell today, and we're gonna have a little chat. We're gonna talk about um, being gal pals. Yeah, yeah, and being bosses, being bosses, and all the stuff in between. So, thank you for joining us, Kristen. Hi. Hi, Monica. Hi, whiskey. This is whiskey. This is whiskey. It's an important part of our conversation. Very, today. very. Um, he's a boy, but. Has a lot of female energy. Yeah, yeah. And he's super supportive of females <laughs> and everything blog her. So we were like, join if you want to join you. <laughs> we're inclusive. Um, okay, so I just wanted to give a little backstory. Do it. Let's give a little backstory. I want to hear you tell it. Okay. Well, I'm going to give a little backstory about us because it's, I think, relevant um, to I think lots of female businesses because I think they often start out of friendships mm -hmm. and um, you know some people know this story already but I started babysitting for the Bell Shepherds and then that grew and grew and grew and grew I started then assisting for Kristen once the kids went to school and then I well it grew very specifically because one afternoon Monica who is also just a great nurturer and at the time was a more of an improv comedian and she was studying and performing and are you growling? Oh my God. And she um, said to me one afternoon when she saw me in a tizzy with emails and and organization and she went Oh, you're a mess. <laughs> do you want some help with any of this? And I was like, y yeah, I do. Um, sure. And then uh, I said, well, what would that look like? And brought her on. And my life was forever. Whiskey, please. Oh, my God. Sorry, guys. He said he was supportive and clearly is not. It's just real life, I guess. It's real life. Um, we are very real life. <laughs> Couldn't be. Whiskey. Whiskey. Um, yes. So I started noticing that there were things that I could take off of her plate and I just kind of did them. Now, in retrospect, I was talking about this the other day, in retrospect, it's a little arrogant of me to have just been like, oh, these like 10 questions for Kristen Bell a questionnaire interview comes in and I'm like, I can write that. I mean, it's some, um, you know, it takes some, oh my God, ask her, okay, I think we have to talk to this for a second. Okay, okay, okay. Take two, we got it under control. This, this is what happens, we're real loosey-goosey until yeah. it's time to get down to biz. And then we need to and biz we, it up. Then we do. Um, anyway, so I think it required two things. It required some, some real oomph and arrogance on my part. Moxie, I'd rather call it. Moxie is a nicer way of saying that. But um, a take charge attitude mixed with your ability to give in that way, to relinquish some control, to trust, which I think can be incredibly hard. And, you know, this is kind of an ugly-ish side of some of of society i think of the way we are raised that like one woman if a woman's at the top it can only be the one and it's really competitive and i think you've done such an incredible job of sort of like breaking those barriers with me and then um with our new addition anna um in in that you somehow have not i think been like dragged down by this competitive nature of like a, a female work environment. And I, and again, I don't like that that exists, but it does. And I'm just being frank. So I wanted to, you to talk about like how you kind of overcame that or if you did. Well, I will say like, first of all, I, I don't delegate very easily. I definitely have to constantly remind myself like, give this person the benefit of the doubt, let them prove that they can do it. Have your, your baseline be, they can do it until they prove to you that they can't like if if you know we had looked at one of those interview surveys or something and you had written for it and then i was approving it and it was you know written in chicken scratch i'd be like well we can't use this so that's not that's not where monica thrives she has other talents but i would say you had already made me feel so comfortable with our friendship and with your ability to uh, do a task from A to Z and not letting things fall through the cracks just as a human being 
that I was able to see all the potential that you could hold and also go like, wow, I could harness some of that potential while helping bring you up. But I will say like, if we were all actresses going for the same role in this house, I'm sure that I would struggle more as much as I have that mantra of lift people up around you. And I will give credit to the one and only Mike Schur who created The Good Place um, for what I learned from him. So he has this secret magic and we've spent many, many nights talking about like, what is it? Like how, how? do we harness it? Uh -huh. What is it that he does so differently? Because everybody wants to work for him and you never stop working for him. Like you just want to go back and he's the kind of person that you can, he can call you on a Friday night. I want to shoot something on Saturday morning and everyone says, okay. Yeah. And that doesn't happen unless you create a really joyful work environment, treat people with the utmost respect. But I was like, there's something else though. And I think after a, quite a few years of working with him, what I noticed is that he pays attention to everything around him and he is constantly looking for ways to bring people up. For instance, he'll see the prop master do like an amazing job on the first two years and go, next year I'm going to have her be the set designer. Mm. And then the year after that, if she does great, I'm going to have her be the production manager. Like there, there are ways to help people grow if you see their potential in a, and I, not to genderize it, but in a, in a, per, in a maternal or parental way of like, I love you. My ball of molecules loves your ball of molecules. And I want you to succeed because your success does not mean my demise. Yeah. And in fact, Adam Grant wrote this morning, um, leaders are judged based on the achievements of their followers. And I think that's Ooh, a really that. serious thing to consider whether it's someone who's on par with you, you can still picture yourself as a leader, even in the social realm. Like if you yeah. and I had the exact same job, I would still want to build you up in hopes of watching you succeed, but also in hopes of receiving that in exactly. return, you know? Yeah. You never know when you'll be on the other side of the coin. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think one little peek behind the curtain, we were talking about this earlier because I just had a dinner with um, an, an amazing entrepreneurial spirit who is working under a actress and and she was talking about the fear of bringing people up under her because she's like i'm gonna get replaced i'm gonna get replaced which is one of my biggest fears as well and um and i told her like okay but the jobs that that person is doing do you want those jobs like it's something to really start thinking about because we're ingrained. I think females are really ingrained of like, you got to do it all. You got to be good at everything. Mm -hmm. In order to succeed, you have to be the best at every single thing and you have to take on all the duties and you have to clean the house. You have to iron the clothes. You have to right. make the meals. You have to do all the paperwork. You have to run the retreat. And it's like, wait a minute, if I can delegate some of this, then I can succeed more. I have more to, if you're going to, if you're going after a career, yeah, blog her community and you, you want more time to plan the retreat and do the paperwork and you can afford it, hire a cleaning lady or order yeah. out or a cleaning man. I didn't mean to say lady or order out, like be okay with spending your hard earned money investing, I should say rather yeah. on the thing that will give you give you back the only thing you cannot purchase, which is time. Exactly. And yeah, and know how do you want to be spending your time? Because if if you're so focused on, I've got to prove that I can do it all, you're actually not focusing on the things that you are great at because you're spending time for all these things that you shouldn't be doing or you don't care about. And instead of focusing on the places that you can, which is a, such a hard transition mentally, I think to say, I don't, I don't need to be the person that is, you know, everyone comes to for everything. Yeah, exactly. But it feels like you do. It feels like that's where your value. And lies. somehow it society tells us that if we don't subconsciously, that if we don't do it all, we're not being enough of a woman. But polite reminder, a lot of men don't struggle with that. Exactly. They're like, let's order out. I'm OK. I got you know what I mean? Like the women, if we were OK with delegating and separating tasks more, which we're not. I don't know that we're even, you know, built to do but if yeah. we can get there 
and focus a little bit more on what do I want to be doing? Where do I see my, you know, non-lateral moves coming from? And then making a list of like, what are my lateral moves? And then can I get anyone to fill those shoes? Can I, you know, hire someone capable? Can I afford it? All those things to consider. But the first step is getting there and dividing your tasks because really time is the only thing you can't get back. And when you fell into my life, which really happened, you fell into my life because I had never had an assistant. Simulation. It's the simulation, obviously. I didn't know, I didn't want to like be that person that had an assistant. My life started getting so much better. And I would say it had more ease. It wasn't easier because I was actually moving up because I had all this time to be focusing on the creativity and the business uh, stuff that I wanted to create because Monica was my partner. Like it was never like, um, you do the small tasks, I'll do the big, but now that's what worked for us. It yeah. was like the, the tasks that Monica was capable of doing, she did all. And then I was able to, to create new ones for us. And then now we've built the team out even more. Yeah. And I mean, and to be fair, we wanted to talk, we were talking about this earlier that it comes with growing pains. Oh, yeah. Like if you're someone who pulls someone up and God bless you, you should be, because I would not be here if it weren't for Kristen making that decision. And I wouldn't, I mean, I, yeah, it's changed my life so profoundly to have a cheerleader like you, but it, it's hard, right? Well, like let's once... get to the specifics. There was one day when I had asked Monica if she could do a, a much more assisting task. I was like, can you pick up X, Y, Z? And she looked at me and said, we need to talk. And I was like, gulp. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, she's going to quit. And she said, I'm not able to do that task or tasks like it going forward because I have a much more managerial position. And I and she just drew a really clear line in the sand and it wasn't a mean line and it wasn't harsh. It was just very clear. And I left that conversation going like, okay, well, um, yeah, that's a lot to think about. And then I like cried because I thought she was literally leaving me. It was also simultaneous the time she started really working on the podcast. So I was like, my husband poached her. <laughs> I don't have her anymore. Um, yeah, I depend, there's emotional layers abound. Yeah, I depend on her. And I had come to depend on her in an irreplaceable way because at that point she was already making very high level managerial decisions and doing very high managerial work for me. So I was like, well, not only, it's not just now that I, I need an assistant. I, I, I have to get a new person to run this empire I'm trying to create. Which was not what I was saying. And I was making it really clear, but of course, emotionally, what you're hearing is you're leaving, you're leaving, you're leaving. Well, I have less time for you. And that wasn't at all. She said, I have less time for these specific tasks. So once I paid attention to her specificity, which you did very well, it was my like defensiveness and, and fear. Then I was like, okay, well, we'll bring someone else in to be doing this kind of stuff because I like the lane I'm in you're telling me you need um one lane instead of two or your your lane's becoming clearer and then we did and now like we have a pretty good working environment Very um happy. yeah and that, that i think everyone's happy, happy with <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think a lot of that does have to do i think female friendships are so intimate almost more intimate, I think, than like male female relationships. There's something very special about them. And I would say, but I would say here, the thing, don't let that scare you. Mm -mm. Keep the intimacy. The intimacy is how it succeeds. Exactly. Not how it fails. I mean, certainly there could be the enigma or like something that backfires, you know, it's like when you work with your friends. But to be honest, I've worked with my friends for many, many years. Like anytime I need to source something, I go to a friend, to be honest. I don't yeah. do like job searches. I go to a friend who I know is a writer. I go to a friend who I know is a hairstylist. And it's it's really worked out in my favor to keep the intimacy of friendship because the respect in a friendship t runs much deeper than a respect in a business. And I find when you fuse those two things, it, it can there can be a lot of growing pains in the beginning because people aren't used to the vulnerability that is required when you need to bring that to your work environment. But I find it to be really, really helpful. Uh, agree. I think intimacy is 
the secret ingredient in a lot of these businesses is how you can start like mind reading and mind melding and being able to make decisions like in a in a much more efficient way but it requires boundaries i think that in boundaries certain areas, and vulnerability and both exactly. vulnerability to say when you need something say when something is not working for you which i guess is also kind of the boundary yeah you know oh a hundred percent and i remember talking to my therapist during this time and i was like it feels so bad you know she's crying at her house i'm crying at my house everyone feels horrible like because there there's a disruption happening but it's it's an important one it's just that change always 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 and this is what my therapist said always comes with a loss even the best change so you're gonna always even when you move into a house that's unbelievable and beautiful and wonderful in your dream house you're losing your old life you're losing your apartment you're and even though you're making a step forward it comes with some sadness. So expect always. that. Mm -hmm. Don't think it's not going to be there. Expect it when you have, you know, have an accurate expectation. Exactly. And to be, by the way, it took us 24 hours to stop crying. Yeah. To over it. it literally <laughs> took us 24 hours and I was like, okay, I get it. And that's great. And here's a plan. Cause like my mode of operations for success is always start from the solution and work backwards. So like, what's the solution, which is, is helpful to my mind because I spiral a lot and I think only in emotions. And sometimes I can't even like articulate how I'm feeling, which setting boundaries is really tough. But I go like, okay, what do I want? I want a good working environment. What does a good working environment require? It requires uh, not losing Monica. What's what? How can I not lose Monica? I need to give her uh, the freedom that she needs in the job position right now to expand, to spread her wings. What does that require? It requires bringing someone else on to sort of help be the Monica for both of us. And she's now got a a whole business next to me with this the podcast that she does with Dax. So it was starting from the solution and working backwards helps you factualize, if that's a word, yeah. the steps needed to get to happiness. Yeah. Um, so should we talk about our podcast? Speaking of podcast, ding, ding, ding. I'll take this one, Monica. Yeah, so Monica is the queen of podcasting. And, um, and can I also just, I want to share a story real quick because, um, the other day, wait, I'm learning how to say who you interviewed. But by the time that, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if we're not allowed to say this, you can bleep it out. So they were interviewing, um, and it was a very cool day and um i think dax wore a suit maybe then dax and monica went up there and prior to the interview starting this is a, a story monica's telling me at dinner she said um you know we were just sort of chatty in the beginning and he's so charming and he said monica it's nice to meet you tell so like what's your story tell me how you got in that seat and then they had a little bit of chit chat and monica said to me at dinner you know he asked me that question and what i regret not saying is oh i put this seat here I brought this seat. This seat was not here because that is the reality for anyone who listens to uh, Armchair Expert. It was not anything until it was an idea in Dax's head of maybe I want to do a podcast. Monica like overheard that, went out and figured out how to run a podcast, figured out all of the things and said, here's a good format I think we should do. And then they started doing it together. But it was really because of her work and putting that seat there and i just like you you call it arrogance but i wouldn't say it's that at all it's it's knowing your value 100 percent. so cut to obviously i'm jealous because i like to talk <laughs> but monica said to me why don't we do something a little bit more for uh the female loves of our lives or the males who can listen why don't we do something called shattered glass and let's interview let's start with 10 amazing women who have put cracks in the glass ceiling and hear about their mistakes, you know, what they were up against. We all know their successes, but let's let's humanize them and bring them to our level, to an intimate level where women can hear other women who have done extraordinary things yeah. talk about their lives. And it has been so fun and we've gotten so fun. The people we've gotten to talk to, it's never thought, never thought in a million years. It's crazy. And you know, it's also fun because there, when 
Biden, and regardless of your political affiliation, when Biden and Kamala won, I saw this like female that day. I feel like the female energy on earth was at a hundred. Like it, I felt so connected to all the women in my life and strangers, like even just walking down the street, it's like, yes, we did it. We did it. And I felt so moved by that, that it was like, we, we can't let this be a one day thing. Like, let's keep talking about it. Let's keep engaging showing off other women's yes. successes yes. is beneficial for women and that is literally what like i was crying that whole day and you know again it, it had having nothing to do with political affiliation i was crying and my daughters were like um i thought you were happy and i said i am but I, not for the reason you might think because when i went to school i saw old white men on the bulletin board who had, you know, been in that White House. And I'm crying because you will not have that same experience. And it's still moving to even yeah, talk about. Like, it yeah. seems so tiny, but it's not. But seeing someone that looks like you, that's why, like, in my field, like, in acting, representation is so important. It is so important to tell stories about loving black fathers and have that out there so you're not you know seeing like what we saw growing up which is like a kid in a hoodie who might be dangerous like that stereotypical that easy cheap storylines you have to show the diversity so that everyone out there in you know who's watching any form of art can see themselves that's the whole goal and so me looking at my little girls knowing that they could see themselves up on that wall and just know that things were achievable was monumental and monica was like let's not let it die no we gotta keep having these conversations and and keep getting just like wisdom like i just i feel yeah. like you're just every time you record these episodes i feel like i leave and i'm like i i just got a download of wisdom from someone incredible like and who you just never get to hear their story or the little tidbits of what they have to or offer. you've heard their story but not in the way we're talking to them and each time they give us a nugget of wisdom i think oh that's an i need a new low back tattoo because i want yeah. them all tattooed on my back what was the most recent one which was um oh i try to ignore the urgency and i was like my whole life is urgency yeah. like the moment i open my eyes i'm like i gotta make the matcha i gotta feed the kids oh, i gotta you know and just ignoring the urgency and going a little bit more she kept saying brick by brick yeah build it brick by brick oh my god maybe your your tattoo should be a bunch of bricks and each one has a quote oh my gosh wow. you guys i'm gonna have Tattoos. sleeves by the end of this <laughs> anyway it's been so fun such a fun project for us and we hope that people will listen and, and gain from it of just a little bit of what we've gained from it yeah because if they do we'll keep finding these women and they're all women that you've heard of but we also hope to find women that you haven't in the way that like you know if you follow any good news sites and you're scrolling on instagram and it's like did you actually know we wouldn't have you know the microwave if it weren't for so and so yeah. and you hear about someone that you're like oh like that's just awesome to know that someone that looked like me gave society and our culture this hugely beneficial invention or, or idea. And I don't know, I just, I like knowing um, credit. It make it helps me place things in my mind. And I wanna give all these women some credit and ask them how they put a crack up there. That's it. We, um, do you have anything else that you wanna add to this little combo? No, I've just enjoyed this. Me too. This is what we, you know, this is the podcast, basically. This is the podcast, <laughs> so, yes, if you want to be involved. And we're usually holding it. these mugs, which, by the way, if you haven't, Hello. these are amazing. This is a female artist on um, Etsy. She's called Crazy Cat Lady Ceramics, so and she good. makes these amazing um, mugs. And, you know, we've got That's another thing we'll her. be doing is kind of highlighting some female-owned businesses and oh, yeah, things yeah. like that. Just, like, drawing attention to the awesomeness that is women and it's basically to like when i try to pay attention to things like this like the reason i said this is because yes i love the mugs but also because mindlessness 
mindlessness does no one any good. Like you vote with your dollars. That's the other thing I'll say to any human being, not just women, you vote with your dollars. If you're paying attention to where you're spending your money, you know, if you support Black Lives Matter, start putting some of those black owned businesses on your shopping list. Like if you're a feminist, start putting some of those female owned businesses on your shopping list because you vote with your dollars and you are putting more money in the pockets of those people who will then help other people succeed. And the whole system gets better. Cheers. The end. Cheers. Thank you, Blog Her, for having us. This was so fun. Yeah. And we hope you check out Shattered Glass and enjoy the rest of the event. The Blog Her event. Yeah.